I'd like to introduce Jenny Cameron, who is one of the co-authors of Take Back the Economy. And um, Jenny's going to tell us a little bit about her research and working with different kinds of enterprises, but particularly cooperatives. So, um, and some of the issues that have come up in trying to organise enterprises around different kinds of ethical concerns. Yeah. So the first cooperative is a food cooperative called The Beanstalk. Uh, which has probably been going now for almost 10 years. Um, and it's located in Newcastle, Australia, where I live. I've been involved as a member, and then a few years ago I got involved on the Board of Management, and then in 2014 um, I became the chair of the cooperative. And one of the things that we have struggled with, because it's a small cooperative, and it, we also call ourselves a community-supported agriculture project mm -hmm. because we work quite closely with local farmers and we source our produce from local farmers principally. Um, and we have one paid employee and then the rest of the work is done by so-called volunteers, but people who for every, usually, for every 10 hours, for every three hours work they do, they get $10 credit. Um, although we went through a discussion and people who take on different roles actually get paid slightly differently depending upon the level of responsibility that goes with the role. But the, the payment is paid in vegetables? In, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in some cases it's in vegetables, in some cases it's in credit, which mm -hmm. you then use by buying your vegetables. Mm -hmm. And the boxes of vegetables are around about $21 a box for regular members and for low income members it's $19 a box. And basically a box of produce will provide two people with what they need across the course of the week. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you know, as often happens, it tended to be the same people who were always volunteering. And one of the things we started to realise is that people were joining and were buying boxes of fruit and vegetables because it was a great way to get incredibly cheap organic fruit and vegetables. Mm. And so then we started to feel like, well, was it that people were misusing Beanstalk, but people weren't really aware that this was a cooperative and that if you're going to be a member of a cooperative, it's not just about shopping cheaply. Yeah. Um, and so, and partly, you know, it was a bit of a joke because we were having these discussions in the management committee meeting and I had been finding out about Park Slope Food Cooperative in Brooklyn, which has got something like 16,000 members mm -hmm. and been going since 1978. And they are absolutely clear that if you're a member of Park Slope Food Cooperative, you are an owner of the cooperative, mm -hmm. you are a cooperator, you are a shopper, but you're also a worker. And I sent this around as a joke mm -hmm. <laughs> to people on the board of management and people said, we should do that mm -hmm. because that really makes explicit in our day-to-day -day practices that this is more than just about getting cheap mm -hmm. organic fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. and sort of getting it on the back of other people's volunteer work. So how did you implement this? So we went through this fantastic process last year in 2014 where basically four of us would meet on a Saturday afternoon and we started to go through all the issues that were involved in it. I mean, in, including, well, I mean, one issue was doing the sort of accounting to figure mm -hmm. out how many, we've got X number of members, in order to cover the work that gets done, mm -hmm. how much time do people need to work over 
I think we decided to do it by seasons. Mm -hmm. So because we're food cooperative, mm -hmm. it made sense to think about it in terms of seasons. So we had to do that. We had to think about if we write this into our constitution, it actually has to go to the Office of Fair Trade and they have to agree to it. Mm -hmm. So we had a whole negotiation around the legal issues, including the interesting one was that if you have it as a requirement that people have to do, and I think we ended up with three and a half hours every three months, mm -hmm. If people don't meet that requirement, they can no longer be a member. And we wanted to have it so that if people had family issues, health issues, there's some room around that. And legally, you can't say that some people can be exempted right. from that requirement. Yeah. So, I mean, we got around it. I don't know whether it's legal. We got around it by saying, for some people, we will award them yeah. 3.5 hours, rather than saying you don't have to do 3.5 yeah. hours. Yeah. So, um, so has it been implemented? So it's been implemented this year. And so far it seems to be going really well. We do think we did lose some members mm -hmm. because people did feel like they couldn't commit to that. Mm -hmm. But we've also tried to be incredibly flexible mm -hmm. around the type of commitment that it requires from people. So we, the stall is open on Tuesday afternoon. So there's obviously lots of work mm -hmm. on a Tuesday afternoon. But there are things like writing for the newsletter. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you've got young children and you can't, it's difficult to work at the stall. Mm. There are other sorts of activities that you can do in a, in a much freer sort of way. So we've tried to be as accommodating of the range of people's mm. life situations. Mm. We also introduced a different type of membership where you have a principal member and then you can have secondary members attached to that principal membership and they can do the work for the principal member. Mm. So, so how do you think it's working? So, I, well, <laughs> If you ask me this in 12 months' time, I'll be in a much better position to yeah. tell you because yeah. I've got an honours student next year who's going to come and work and look at the impact of introducing this. Yeah. But so far, the anecdotal feedback from the person who's the work coordinator yeah. is that it's actually running really well. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, I think the longer-term impact will be to see how differently it makes people feel about what it means to be a cooperator. Yeah. So it's not just the cheap, yeah. organic fruit yeah. and veg, yeah. but it's a whole range of other things. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's, um, that's one example of a yeah. relatively small group yeah. um, that's still finding its way in terms yeah. of how does it work with work. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. the other examples uh, in Hong Kong, I think, and yeah. it's, it's a different kind of set of issues that have yeah. emerged there. Yeah. Uh, th so this is from the Hong Kong Women Workers Cooperative, but who principally work with um, women, for instance, who would have worked in the machining industry as machinists and then as workers move to the Pearl River Delta, mm -hmm. they've lost jobs mm -hmm. um, and become unemployed. So it's thinking about women's employment, um, chiefly women who have done very manual sorts of work mm -hmm. in, a, in a situation like Hong Kong. And so the Hong Kong Women Workers Association has been established for a number of years and they have a number of smaller cooperatives um, in various locations. And the one I want to talk about is one that's at the Chinese University of Hong Kong uh, and it's a, a group of women who run a food canteen mm -hmm. um, and basically I know about this because of being based at the Chinese University. So this is of, to serve students food To serve food students during food, the day. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, interestingly, uh, yes, it's, it's a small... I think there's probably about eight to ten members of the cooperative. The university has a requirement that any food... Um, outlets on campus have to be open to something like midnight mm. um, and when they the university introduced that the student body were fantastic and what they did is they started what's called a special service so the women w can work regular hours mm -hmm. and then the students run the canteen for until one o'clock in the morning and are they members of the co-op as well no or are they no so they, they say, so they call it this special service that uh -huh. students do and i think they get discount on food and that sort of thing right. but it's this you know wonderful sense of solidarity mm. that the students really support this idea of having a hong kong women workers association mm. or cooperative food outlet mm. on campus and so they want to see that mm -hmm. being supported so what have been the challenges of running yeah. that co-op yeah. well so the, i mean i think in terms of the things we talk about in Take Back the Economy, I think the two interesting things are first about how they produce surplus mm -hmm. and then the decisions that they make around distributing the surplus. Mm -hmm. So, And what I'll do is talk about a couple of issues that mm -hmm. the cooperative have had to work through. So 
the first one is, I mean, obviously the, the, the um, cooperative wants to generate some surplus. So they need to think about their sales and what's mm -hmm. bringing income. And their, the and their wages. And, their, and yeah. Exactly, it affects their wages. But they also do things like they have annual retreats where they go away together and they talk through issues. Um, and, you know, and they do, they do want to generate some surplus. Mm -hmm. um, and one way that they can on the Chinese University of Hong Kong is by selling students noodles, instant noodles. Which are cheap. Which are cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, students love them. Mm -hmm. They eat lots of them. But the women... So that's a good line of business. Yeah. But the women in the cooperative were really reluctant to sell noodles because they feel like they're really unhealthy yeah. because of the... You know, yeah things that get added to it. And so this was quite, a, you know, a discussion for quite some period about the extent to which they should be selling noodles because of their concern about student health, um, which is, you know, a nice reverse solidarity there mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the, the students. So in the end, the decision that they came to was that they put fresh vegetables into the noodles. <laughs> and so, you know, it's a win-win because <laughs> the students are getting the noodles, <laughs> the women feel like the students are getting... More yeah. nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're also able to continue generating surplus. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that was one interesting negotiation. Yeah. But, you know, they... And I, I can't remember now whether it's every week or every fortnight, they actually take an entire afternoon where Mei Lin comes from the central body of the Hong Kong Women Workers Association and she works with them and coordinates the meetings and takes them through the decision making. Mm. So that wasn't an easy, it wasn't yeah. a fast decision, it really did take some time. So you know, a bit like what we had to do at Beanstalk where it took quite some time to think through, do we want to move to having people having to do this work requirement mm -hmm. and then if so, what are the mechanics of how we do that? Mm -hmm. um, so the other decision that they've had to spend a lot of time doing is if we're generating this surplus, how do we distribute it? Mm -hmm. And so they actually came up with three different models about how the surplus might be distributed, mm -hmm. including do we give different amounts of surplus to different women on the basis of how long they've worked for the cooperative? Mm -hmm. um, and in the end, the decision was that they would do that so that women who have worked there longer than other women mm -hmm. who've been there for a shorter period would get a larger share, and they worked it out proportionally. Mm. What so I mean, one one idea would just <coughs> would have been to just divide the surplus up and give equal. everybody an, a, an a surplus payment every year, for yeah. instance. Yeah. But they decided to do it on the basis of seniority. Well, the percentage and by seniority, yeah. and and the reason why they did that was because what they recognised is that the women who had worked there the longest had actually put a lot of time and effort into building the cooperative and those women who had come in more recently were benefiting from that work that, mm -hmm. that the other women had mm -hmm. put in over a much longer period of time. Mm -hmm. So again, yeah. it sort of parallels with, with Beanstalk are thinking, well, there are some people who are volunteering and, it, and that helps to make this really cheap fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. and other people who aren't volunteering are getting the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. So is there a, you know, how do you address that, mm -hmm. this benefit that mm -hmm. it can seem between mm -hmm. members? So here we, we've got two examples of... Uh, uh, people very participating very much in the decision making around yeah. how an enterprise runs and yeah. what surplus yeah. is, how it's yeah. distributed, and yeah. I guess the kind of what it's like to be part of a more collaborative yeah. You know, yeah. economic activity. Yeah. 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 And really thinking through what are, for instance, with the Hong Kong example, thinking through what your relationship is with other members of the cooperative, but also thinking through what your relationship is with the people who. Who, who are, are buying your, your products, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. the consumers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I suppose the interesting, the parallel is with uh, the Hong Kong example is that the relationship is principally with consumers, buyers mm -hmm. outside of the cooperative, yeah. Yeah. whereas for Beanstalk, the connection that we're really trying to foster because it started as a consumer cooperative mm -hmm. is with the producers. Who are prosumers in a way, they're producers and consumers. Well no no okay. no, no no there are three there oh. are principally three farmers that right, okay. we get produce from. Yeah. And they tend to send some of their produce to Beanstalk and then some usually goes to the organic fruit and vegetable right. markets. But you're also reshaping the relationship with the volunteers who yes. are the consumers. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. Now, I mean now really what we're doing is we're we're a joint consumer and worker cooperative right. because there's now a work requirement that everybody has to fulfil. Yeah, yeah. yeah.